Hi everyone, welcome to Third Coast Gaming Impressions. That's what it is. Today is June 19th. It is episode... What is that? 26, 36? It's one of those numbers. It's, it's I'm with 30s. Austin Taylor. It's yeah. We're in the 30s. Yeah. We're putting some work in. We're talking the games. We're having fun. That's me, by the way. I'm Austin it's a time. Taylor. Yes, hello. And I'm Travis Doyle. How's it going? Uh, we both played some games. I was going to... I Red Dead had an online update, and it's less than fine, mm. but I still have time to play the other stuff that came out, but it's mostly like, this is like their summer update, I guess. They don't have like a regular update schedule. They had it, when the game originally came out, they would put out more updates, but it's kind of petered off, and they do updates like twice a year, maybe. Yeah. Even that. I think the last one was in December when there was – I was playing it in December. That's right. We talked about it. They had like a battle pass they put out. Um, I might have missed one of the battle passes between it, but this is their criminal capitale update, which I'll get into. I just have to look up the – I didn't write down the – it's called Blood Money, and it's yeah. mostly like criminal organization and like getting into weird crime capers and stuff. And, eh. Eh. Yeah, uh, eh. eh. Really? I'll kind of, yeah. The, the um, game where you are a, a criminal cowboy and it's, eh? Yeah, so I'll get into what the setup of this is you boot up the game and it'll have you, it'll get you into a cutscene where you're talking to a guy and he's like, hey, we got a bunch of criminals around here and they want, um... You to do jobs with them, and then you come back to me, the rich Italian man, who you give me the capitale, and everyone says capitale way too much, and it's the new currency in the game that yeah. they kind of added. Oh no! That you use this currency to pay to go do the fun longer missions that pay out like one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. You can also buy the capitale with gold to go play these missions too. There's a thing with gold currency in this game, which is the second resource, which is like the paid one you can buy off of PSN, that people who've played this a lot have exorbitant amounts of gold because when this game released, people would hit the dailies in a certain way to just get like 8,000 gold. And newer players who have who only play, who have like a week's amount of time of playing or like a month or, you know, whatever, they might be using gold more often to buy the character classes or to just get other stuff and not want to use gold. So there's like this split between people who play this way too much or people who stream this who have gold because they played a lot. And then that's kind of a bummer. It's still pretty easy to get gold, and it's kind of easy to get Capitale. To a certain extent. So what it makes you do is you go talk to these criminals who are, there's five of them and they're kind of equally spread out on the map in certain places and they're mission givers. And they updated that as well. You have these random stranger missions, which used to be in Red Dead Online, that you would go to a stranger and do. But now they're all queued up in one place when you talk to a criminal or a stranger. Yeah. And then these criminals, in addition to the stranger missions, have criminal missions that... There's like eight of them right now, and there's a set. There's one where you do one mission and you're done, and then there's one of a set of three missions, and then the third one is like the bigger, grander mission, and you have a better payout. They don't pay out very well. They, when I did one of these missions, they paid out two dollars, which okay. in the same time I could do go do a bounty and get like a hundred dollars or whatever, because people, you know, you kind of if you're trying to make money, you're not gonna. You're going to play this content for fun, but you have to have other content you play for money, which should be both. Yeah. In my opinion. Ideally, yeah. Yeah. And then during these Capitale missions where you're trying to grind for this currency, the only way you get it, it doesn't seem to be a guaranteed payout at the end of these single missions. You have to find it off the body of someone who's like kind of like a major player 
in this mission. Like usually the leader of some gang you'll go to will have like one Capitale on him. To buy these uh, missions, yeah. the easy one is like 15, the hard one's 20, and the really hard one's like 25. And they don't pay out. Like the easy one probably pays out 80. I did the medium one, it paid out like 150, and the hard one pays out like 250. And there you get like, the hard one pays out like one gold, like one gold. But you can spend like three gold to buy like five Capitale or something. So it's really weird. The missions are themselves are fine. Like I enjoyed queuing up for these and the three part missions at the end of the third part yeah you can loot a body for like three capital which i'm just going to call it capital from now on because it's fine we probably should. but it's but it's weird how they've gated red dead has a problem where there's not a lot of content unless you're like you have these roles which you need gold to buy yeah and after you beat the main story missions you don't get them better story missions until you're like a bounty hunter which has really good missions but you have to buy that for 10 gold but you can get into gold pretty easy in the beginning of the game but you know it's still there's these bigger you want heists you want these big long missions with friends and you want to go do stuff and it's like it was a the first mission was a train heist which is kind of like the red dead the red ben clemson bounty I think we might have done where you you get onto the end of a train and you go up you kill some people you get to the end yeah like you fight your way up a train yeah. to your bounty targets there are like three yeah the that's what this place. mission is yeah. it's a it's a train thing this is one of like five of these missions that they're going to slowly release but it was fine the ending it should have been but it should have been something else and then they also have your the pass which came out which we'll talk about in a bit did did you have any questions about the criminals or anything i didn't like clearly talk about no i mean not okay not currently i don't like i'm just kind of just taking in the fact like this whole like yeah. sort of <laughs> i don't want to say pyramid scheme because i don't know if that like what an actual pyramid scheme is to identify it as such like this like, fucking like money scheme that they have going here yeah like honestly grinding to buy weapons and horses and accessories and stuff is kind of what keeps me going in red dot online because i like earning these new th- things I can kind of play with in the open world and stuff. Yeah. But there are certain things that it's kind of like in real life where like, if I want to make a lot of money, there's a certain thing I can do that I can get into to make more than spending my time elsewhere. But if you want to have fun and mess around with friends, there's some more fun stuff that don't make you as much money. But most of the bounty hunter stuff they release is really fun and you make good money and you make good gold off of it. But all the other stuff that's come out isn't as good. Like, it's such a stacked, like, payout. Like, like playing some PvP matches, which are sweaty and can take, like, 30 minutes to 15 minutes sometimes, don't pay a lot unless they're in, like, a modifier for, like, the special of the month, which is, like, oh, go play this multiplayer mode and it pays more. Yeah. Which is fine. There's, like, a weird... Their focus is definitely, it looks like, on GTA Online, which is kind of the bummer. Because I like this more. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. I'm not getting screwed over in the open world by other players. I barely see other people. I like the shooting better, which is like a weird thing to say about Red Dead 2. Because when that came out initially, I wasn't a big... Ooh, my, did my... I might have just stopped recording. I'm going to keep talking as it keeps going. And Okay. All right. I don't know. I like. I, it's still recording. It's fine. But I like the. I like the shooting in Red Dead now. I I've enjoyed it, and I've liked the horse, riding around on a horse, and I've liked switching between like third person, and first person, really fast, and like general stuff that happens. Yeah, like generally, like I've always kind of felt that Red Dead is always like there are like several components of Red Dead too that are like always on the cusp for me of being like just really cool right like as far as like its aiming goes and that like it wants you to be taking very deliberate shots um as opposed to like you know spraying uh up until you get to the point where the game is just like okay go oh, buck wild online has broken that and oh. you don't take time to aim like i am bolt action rifle i i aim at someone hit dead eye instantly hit them come out of dead eye and then yeah. i'll sp- i spam dead eye and i'm pinpoint accurate but it's fun so it's cool they got some abilities that make the game 
more arcadey than like the story mode is. Like I still, like in story mode, I've been playing a little more because I got back into the online where I do take more time with shots. But you can definitely spray a little more, like spray and pray a little more in the online. Even though it's like, you know, I've got two six shooters, I've got a repeater and I've got a bolt action rifle or I'm swapping one of the long arms for a shotgun, but you're still kind of, I'm still kind of running around gunning people down, which still has been like a very fun experience, but updates aren't as cool. There's still stuff. I'm still finding stuff to do. Cause I didn't burn out like that solid month. I played it. Yeah. Cause I think the open world carries that, which might carry me a little more into the story mode to actually go beat that instead of spending my time in something that rockstar might not be putting the time into or as I am, which happens with, you know, these live service games that they want to, where they don't pay off. They don't get as much time. We talked about that with some other stuff, but, um, there's rumors that the next update could be a survival mode, which I'm really into because I like waves. I like fighting waves of enemies with other people. That could be interesting. My hopes aren't high. Um, the battle pass this time is is cool. It went from being 40 to being 25. It's a little less gold. And then when you complete it, it pays you out the full amount of gold, which most people who play a lot end up doing. And there's some stuff in there. There's some smaller stuff. And then they added the battle pass items from other ones into shops. They're a little expensive, but you can you can get all of them and you can kind of max out buying all these special recipes and stuff. So it's been all right. I'm just hanging out shooting some stuff i went back did some bounties did a little bit of the missions it's okay so like i mean they're advertising this with like this like narrative thrust right like this sort of this narrative where you are working for a uh the right hand man of a character from the main campaign like is that even really a thing outside of setting up your like new series of missions yeah you you meet this character when you set up the mission and then you meet them again when you go turn in the capital to him and he'll set up what this big heist they want they're doing this heist you want to go you're you're on this train because you're stealing this emerald that's really cool and they're going to make money off it but i'm not Uh which i guess that's capitalism you know the person who works really hard to get it doesn't get paid but the person who hired me does which is kind of this is they make a joke about that when you're working for these people but all of these missions are slightly different variations of like a regular red dead mission where one of them i went to a place cleared out some enemies but i got a different character to talk to to send me there like one one of the three part missions is there's a gang that a musician a musician used to be a part of and the musician left the gang so i'm going to the gang first I'm hunting them down. They're kind of trying to tell me where the musician is, which is why I went there. Because the musician has some capital. You're trying to you're trying to get capital from all these different places. You're trying to steal it so you can, I guess, give it to this Italian guy so he can go give you on a big heist. Because I guess you have to f- go fund the heist is the whole thing. Is the rationale they put behind it. But yeah, you're going – you're finding different – all these missions are ways of getting capital and they kind of explain that that's how the story is set up too, is that you're robbing people to get money, but you're not actually making a lot of money off it. You're, you're making the third currency, but the missions were cool. I have actually enjoyed some of these weird missions and I'll probably go back and play them and check them out again. And the Cinemax were good. You know, they're, they're the voice acting is really good. These criminals you're meeting who have the set of missions have some like unique dialogue and they have a starter mission you do for each of the one, five of them. That's like unique is one of five missions. And then you have the seven other choices to select. So there's, there's a couple different stuff. They're not amazing, but they're not terrible. They're just somewhere in between. It's mediocre, you know, but, um, well, let's see. Let's let's. I'm 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 good on the I'm good on the Red Dead. You played some Baldur's Gate three. You also that that game got an update as well. I'm talking and to- talking in circles over here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's uh, fair. You know it's you know it's like it's hard to get to wrap around like your he- people your head around like sort of like online things that are like constantly changing, but also seemingly not uh, in a real way. Um, 
and like RDO, RDO is like a real enigma of a thing because you think it'd be a lot denser than it already, than it is currently. Um, yeah, and it's it's I'll, the last thing I'll say. It's pretty thin, but I'm still having fun. Yeah, which may be a testament to like the campaign of that game. Yeah, just like that game. This, is... The couple of things they give you, the couple of the bones they throw the online players. The bones of that game still turn out are kind of neat. Um, yeah, but they uh, they got an update for Baldur's Gate three. This is their their fifth patch. Uh, we talked about this a bit last week pre release, uh, and this got pushed back from the original Tuesday release to last Thursday. And this is mostly like a feature heavy thing. Like we talked about the the new dice active dice roll mechanic, where now you can uh, when you go into a dice roll. And this is D and D. This is you know a D and D video game. Uh, when you go into a dice roll, you can have characters give you buffs if they have like spells, like the Guidance Cantrip, which is a a spell clerics have, where you can add a D4 to a roll, right? And like in its current version right now, you can do that on any roll if you have someone who can give that buff to you uh, during dialogue. So like the character Shadow Heart, who also has a lot of narrative uh, sort of material added into into this patch. Uh, like you can use her to give you guidance and that will give you 1d4 on every roll that you make that needs that kind of check even rolls you make against her right like dialogue rolls are trying to get her to talk about her past and such like you can have her give you guidance so you have a better chance at getting her to talk about her life which is very funny um i'm pretty sure that's i'm sure that functionality is going to get like messed with and uh ironed out to where you probably won't be able to do that but i i, I enjoy i'm enjoying it right now um, and they have other things like you have camping, which is pretty overhauled because it used to just be you have to take a long rest in D and D, right? And that's how you get back your full hit points uh, outside of guzzling down potions and food, and also like spell slots for caster classes. Now you need to uh, put enough resources in to do a long rest. It's not just you select the long rest option and you get your stuff back after going to camp. It's like now you have to put in at least 40 materials with where I'm at in this current patch. And that is like all of your food stuff, your um, supplies, like some like miscellaneous like firewood. So you have like a fire going, uh, food that you can cook, which is a bit of a bummer because food in Baldur's Gate 3 used to just be uh, stuff that you can make your character scuttle down. So you're not using up all your health potions outside of combat. And that kind of thing's a little different. And then you just have a number of like new cinematics, um, new items, like new magical items. There's something I just picked up in my playthrough that was a uh, like a magical book about religions that wasn't there before. And I'm not sure exactly what part this will play in the narrative because it's not in my inventory anymore. But um, you just pick it up and it's a list of religions like that used to exist and like currently exist that like is magically updating itself. Um, at random points in time, huh. and, and it's just like a it's a it's a neat little thing, um, that you mess with once and you get like an approval uh point from Shadowheart your cleric if you manage to decipher it, and that's that's all well and good. It's it's mostly a features update. It's like the user experience is much smoother. They added in new voice lines for the custom like player character because right now you have to make your own character. Um. That like actually in they uses their voiceover lines for more than just like the uh, ambient dialogue as they walk around. That kind of thing's like it's interesting. And it's like continues to show that this game this game could be something really interesting. Um I don't know how many more patches they have because they've already said that they're targeting a release date for it next year. Um and I'm not entirely sure like what the rest of early access for this game is going to look like, but if like if it kind of like stopped here, I would be interested enough in this game to like probably put some real time into it in its final release. Yeah. So this uh, so this update came out. Are you having a good time with it? Like, do you think this is like this does this improve like what's already like the base of like Baldur's yeah. Gate three? Yeah. Like it improves it all like pretty significantly. Um, it also improves like uh, you know. Um, like aside from like the user experience, they also talk about how they're improving uh, enemy AI. So like the AI in the game is just much smarter. So combat encounters feel a lot more dynamic than they used to. Um, like there's just the last fight I got into was like at some gate, and you fight like a bunch of goblins. 
because that's you know the kind of thing this D&D game is is like your first real enemy you fight are uh, unionized goblins and um like you have that fight going on and you have like AI game. you have AI good. um companions that aren't like in your party helping you and like they're a lot smarter than they used to be too because like it's the first time you meet this character named Will and the entire time you're doing that fight he's literally throwing healing items at your party um whenever they get hit so and that, that didn't happen before it used to just be he was going to stand at the ledge of this gate and use his uh the very common uh warlock cantrip uh, eldritch blast which is like the main way of dealing damage for early level warlocks in D. &D. Uh, he's just going to do that the entire combat encounter and that's useful but it's not very helpful when you're getting just destroyed by goblins and uh, wargs being just really big angry dogs. So I'm guessing you've had a character that you've been playing, and when an update rolls out, you'll kind of check in and find the new content a little oh, bit, no. or just kind of keep playing um, the game? No? So when, you, when these patches hit, they invalidate your saves. So, so, so that doesn't sound good. So this is the thing, right? <laughs> this is the thing when people ask me if like they should get into early access Baldur's Gate. Only if you want to mess with systems. So every time this big patch hits, like, you know, and they've done this like five times now, um, they've invalidated save files because of all the new features, whether that be um like new classes or just uh, new updates updated things so i've had to make a character every time one of these hits and right now i have two characters i'm running one of which is like the druid and i think this is this is going to be the one character i finally do like an evil playthrough of this early access content for because i've never gotten myself to do it because i don't particularly like that style of play but if there's a time to do it it's now while like the narrative doesn't matter because i'm gonna have to redo the save anyway um and then i have what's up yeah. All right. So, is there like, is there like a endpoint to the pre-release stuff? Are you getting to a certain set of yeah, missions? Be yeah. like, okay, we're done for now. Yeah. There's is a, it? Yeah. So there's like a, is, it's a solid like twenty. I would say it's like a solid twenty hour like section of the game. And once you get to the end of the game in the Underdark, which is like the within Faerun is like this sort of underground society like cave network thing where, um, yeah, like a lot of like unique. Uh, people live yeah and okay and second question evil, oh, sorry keep going sorry, like in a lot of air quote evil people live once you get to like a certain point there you get a video message from Sven vinky who's the you know creative director at Larry. he's like okay that's it that's it we're still making it okay so second question have these updates pushed that ending or is it still the same amount of I... gameplay but with new systems in between that 20 hours i don't think it's pushed because i've only gotten there once right i don't think it's pushed the narrative content at all it has like it's changed the narrative content within this section of the game but like outside of the first part of the game i don't think you've gone farther than this yeah so does that mean your evil playthrough has like different missions than like your good playthrough or are you just playing it a little different well it's different different characters you interact with so if i do the good playthrough I get a helper character named Halcyon, who, like, within the larger framework of the game, is, like, promised to help me go do a thing. And if I basically go do a thing to help me get, because the narrative sort of inciting incident in this game is you get kidnapped by Mind Flayers. They put a tadpole in your brain, and a tadpole is, like, a incubator for, a, like, the uh, Ceramorphosis, which is the thing that turns a person into a Mind Flayer. Um, and if you do the good playthrough, you go talk to Halcyon and he's like, yo, um, this is where you need to go, a section of the game that you can't access. And we're going to help you. I'm going to help you get this, uh, mind flare parasite out of your head and see what's going on and why, like, because a lot of people have these, they're showing up and they're not undergoing uh ceramorphosis. They're not turning into mind flares. Uh, and so he wants to go see what's up with that. If you do the evil playthrough, you kill Halcyon. And you team up with uh, the other faction for a little bit. And instead of like going to get the Mind Flayer Parasite out of you, you're going to basically harness the power of the Parasite so you can prove yourself to a deity called the Absolute. And what that 
character actually is is uh is really up in the air currently it's most likely i imagine some sort of reincarnation of ball ball being the uh the god of murder and like the main antagonistic force of the first two Baldur's gate games okay are you having fun messing with the systems like oh yeah when some new stuff comes out at least yeah like I, whenever the new stuff comes out like specifically the last two updates which like the last one before this added the druid class and like this current one adds a lot of like shadow heart narrative content is is, is fun because like the thing i'm doing in this current playthrough is like i'm playing as a get yankee and how that interacts with shadow heart is something i want to see because the thing with shadow heart like it's a real bummer with shadow heart is that she's a racist uh like she's racist against get the Yankees and something that you can do in this game that you couldn't do in previous uh, versions is when you find her on the mind flare ship, which is the tutorial level of the game, uh, you can get her out of the pod that she's in now, finally. And once you get her out of the pod, it kind of makes her racism towards you as a get the Yankee disappear. She's still a real jerk to uh, Lizel who's your Get Yankee, like, fighter companion. Uh, but, like, it does, like, affect how she interacts with you in ways that I, that I want to see. I'm not super into it either way. I don't, like, again, like, pairing with fictional racists is not a thing I'm ever really into. It's why, like, you know, Ashley Williams is always dying on Vermeer when I play Mass Effect. But... Uh, but I, I'm interested in seeing, like, what's, what's going on with Shadow Heart, more or less. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you're having an experience. Hey, at least you get to start over and play some stuff. When I when I get an update, I play the new content and then I repeat the old content out of order yeah. or something. I don't know. Uh, it's cool. I can, I'm excited to see how Baldur's Gate three comes out when it's like fully released too. And yeah, you know when the story finishes. Hey, hey, twenty hours for a pre-release story ain't bad for something like that. Yeah, like it's it's pretty like sizable. I. I don't know if people thought like they'd be releasing like chapters of the narrative as they went. I'm kind of like glad they're not. Um, but, like this like opening section, like it's very standard D and D. You know, it still like has the same problems that like D and D as a system have, both in its mechanics and um, like its narrative. But it, it it is still fun to mess with. Like it is still like has that level of fun that like Larian games do have with like a rule set. I am fond enough of yeah well it's cool because i think it's a good idea that they don't release each episode in parts because it's like you're watching tv you're digesting a little bit yeah. of it, and you have to wait and then you forget what happens last time i think it's smart that they're like yeah we'll finish this and put out the rest of the story after enjoy the opening hours of this it's like okay yeah i mean it's 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 i, I, I keep coming back so <laughs> doing something right yeah that's true all right speaking of stuff that's gonna keep doing something right uh we'll be back next week uh till then have a good week austin all right and to you the listeners as well have a good week goodbye goodbye for a while and to all a very good night oh that's, that's the christmas thing right uh probably i don't know